everyone, my name is Nick Trashinsky and today we're going to do a deep dive into the Shopify image tag and everything you need to know for implementing images within your theme development. If you would like to view this content in blog format, I will put a link in the description. Let's get started. Now, what exactly is the image tag? Well, it's basically a Shopify liquid tag that we can pass data and attributes like this and it outputs a standard HTML image tag. So, um, this is probably something that most people are familiar with and this is the new Shop way, Shopify way of doing things. Why is this better than this? Well, let's look at a couple of, of examples. So here in my development theme, I've added two divs, each containing an image. This first image I've added using the standard HTML image tag, and the second I've rendered using the Shopify uh, liquid image tag. So if we look at this on the site, wow, look at that. So this looks terrible and this one looks quite good. Um, so what's the reasoning for this? Well, for starters, the liquid theme tag requires that you pass in a dimension, either a height or a width. Now, this probably doesn't make a huge difference to the naked eye, but what it's actually doing is adding the attributes height and width so that your website will then reserve that space, and that will make your users and Google very happy because it allows less jank when the images are finally loaded. And this is something that happens very frequently on mobile devices or poor uh, connection um, devices, so this is a huge plus. Now something that's really cool is you'll notice in this example as well as in my code we're only passing a width here. If you look at my code I'm only passing a width of 450 pixels, or 450 rather, and if we look at the actual output on the screen we can see right here that it added a width and a height, meaning this simple image tag automatically applied the height even though I didn't specify it. Now that's a big deal. And it's something that's going to keep your users happy as well as Google because what's going to happen is now your site can reserve the space it needs for the images even on poor connections when um, we've all experienced websites where you're scrolling or enjoying the site and then finally the image loads and then it makes everything move on the site. That's what we want to avoid here and that's what Shopify is now enforcing. So this is a great guardrail for that. Now you might be wondering, why does this top image look that bad? We're manually specifying the height and width here. Real issue here is that I cheated to make a difference. I'm using this IMG URL versus the spelled out image URL. And the IMG URL, that is deprecated. You should never be using this anymore. Um, and you should be using the image URL. So that will make a huge difference. Another huge benefit of using the image tag here is that this is going to automatically inject lazy loading into your image tags. So if you've ever worked on optimizing your web page, you've probably heard of lazy loading. And what that means is loading images as they are needed. For example, in this page, there are several images. And if I was to start here at the top, this is the only thing in view. Why would I load all the images past a certain point? when it's going to take some time to scroll. So what we can do is we can kind of cheat performance and only load the images that are needed at the beginning and then load the others as they're needed. This can have huge lifts to your performance. So if we look at the actual image tag, here's the one using the standard image and you'll see it just has the source, the width, and the height. However, if we look at the next image, we can see that it has the source set, which we'll talk about later, as well as this attribute here, loading lazy. Now, there is one caveat to this. The loading lazy attribute will be added if, by default by Shopify if the section it indexed is greater than three. So what the heck does that mean? Well, if we open up the documentation and if we look at the index here, we will see that this is basically a count for you and tells you where in the section order that your, uh, excuse me, where in the template order your section is in re relation to the top of the page. So this is really useful for things like performance when we want to make sure that we're building our sections reusably um, because sometimes a section might be at the top of the page and sometimes a section might be at the bottom of the page. And this is a way of telling uh, our app how to load and prioritize what should be loaded and what shouldn't. So let's look uh, at an example here. If we look at the current site, we'll see that it is being loaded. Um, and I've added this little data loading attribute here so we can see where I'm actually outputting what the current section index is, and you'll see that it's four. However, if I go into the customizer, 
And if I move, you'll see right here it's numbered fourth in this template. But let's move it up to three and see what happens. Now if we save here and reload, and if we look at these images again, we're going to see that that lazy loading is not added and the data loading attribute, the section index, is 3. Now, I personally would go for a more aggressive approach than using the standard uh, index of 3 that Shopify recommends, so I'm going to customize that. And here's how you can do that. And we're going to write some liquid logic here. So if the section.index is greater than 1, and I'll just finish out my formatting here. If that is the case, then I want to assign loading to lazy, else I want to assign loading to eager. Now all I have to do is go to my image tag, add a comment, and loading equal to loading. Now if we save this, oops, and I made a mistake here, this should be colon. Now if we save and reload our page, and upon inspection you can see that loading lazy has been added even though the index is still 3. Now, as a little bonus, here's a really cool uh, filter that you can apply to the image URL. Uh, I've created this third image, and you'll see it's using the image tag, the image URL. Um, but to the image URL, there is actually a filter that we can add called crop. So let's look at this scenario real quick. This is a slightly rectangular image. It has a longer width than height. But let's say that you need to display it as a perfect square. Um, how can you do that without screwing up your dimensions or diving too deep into CSS? Well, we can do that right on the image tag by having this crop attribute. So we've set the width and the height to 400, so it should be a perfect square, and we're going to crop the center. And when we do that, the end result gives us this. So you can see here the original image and the new one at these different dimensions, and all it's done is crop. If we look at the documentation, we can see that crop is uh, you can pass top, center, bottom, left, right, or region. So this is a cool uh, little hack to avoid CSS, which I'm always in favor of. Now we can get a little bit more granular about some of the features that uh, you should be implementing if you want to maximize the value that you're outputting to your end users, um, built using, again, built-in um, abilities within the Shopify image tag. So let's take a quick look at one where we can create a source set on the image tag. Now if we go back to the code, you'll see that I've added a new image here, um, and this is has a few new tweaks to it. So we can see we have the same image, we have the URL width passed in, and we have the image tag passed in with um, this new attribute called widths, and it has a string with comma separated values. So let's start there. Uh, what is the source set? source set is a value that goes on an image tag and um, the first thing we need to understand is something called device pixel ratio or DPR. Now as developers we know the size that we want to display the image but we don't know the DPR of the user's device. There's no way you could possibly know that. Um, so this is where the source set attribute comes in. Uh, it provides a list of candidate files. So what that means is it will provide a couple different dimensions of the image and the browsers are now smart enough to know which one they should use based on the divisor screen and DPR. So then it browser, the browser can then pick the right URL uh, to download based on the files that we've given it. So let's look at an example here. If we navigate to the site and I open up this image in the inspector, uh, wow, that's a lot of files. If we compare that to the, very, to the very first tag that we created using the standard HTML tag, there's a lot of stuff going on. And this is all good stuff. You can see here that we have this source set which if I click into, you can see uh, it has a list of a couple different CDN um, links to our image. So here's one for 900, and here's one for 450. And now uh, it 
may appear to the naked eye like it's the same as this image up here. I mean, after all, they have the same dimensions. What's going on behind the scenes here? So if we look back at the code, you'll see that I also added this style attribute. Um, so this style attribute has a width of 450 and a height of three, uh, 300. So that is why it's matching the size of the other image. However, by passing it these widths and adding the source set value, we've given the browser the ability to determine based on uh, my computer, my screen size, etc., which image would actually yield the best result. So, uh, how can I prove this to you? Well, if we go in and look, if I look at this and if I scroll up slightly, you may not be able to tell, um, but this top image, not using source set, is actually a little bit worse resolution. I'll show you if I right click here and open this image in a new tab, you'll see, okay, so this is the image that we are using right now. If I go and open up this new image in a new tab, you'll see, wow, look at that, way bigger image, a lot higher resolution. And this is a common misconception and something that um, is extremely important because when I first discovered the source set, uh, I thought that it just was based off of the screen size and that was the only factor. But the truth is, is um, when you think that it is only by screen size, you would imagine that mobile screens will get the smaller image and desktops will get the larger image, that would be expected. However, with mobile phones having such great screens now, they're actually downloading the larger images uh, more often than not. So we need to make sure we optimize for this. And again, one of the real value adds here is that if you look at my code, I'm not adding multiple values to the source set. I'm just specifying the sizes that I want. And Shopify's image tag is going to do the heavy lifting for us. And that's kind of the main takeaway from this video and this tutorial is to let the Shopify image tag do the heavy lifting for us. Now, there's one other element I wanted to bring up, which is the sizes attribute. If we navigate back to the documentation, here it is. It's another thing we can pass to the image tag. And you may be thinking, what on earth do we need another thing passed for? Well, this may look complicated, but really all this sizes is doing is it's letting you help the browser or dictate to the browser uh, what is part of the screen or the approximate size that that image is gonna be used on. So what does that mean? Well, when we look at the source set of the image, it's giving the browser, hey, based off the size and the resolution of the screen, here are the image options. And then the browser makes that determination based on looking at my browser and saying, okay, this looks like maybe 750 pixels wide. What the sizes attribute allows us to do is tell the browser, hey, this image is only going to take up 50% of the screen size on desktop, whereas on mobile, it's going to take up 95% of the screen size. So it's a, an additional hint that you can give to the browser to make a better choice. So in summary, if we look at the code here, the first takeaway is to never use the IMG URL. This has been deprecated. Um, and secondly, to always use this image tag because Shopify is trying to help us. They're trying to optimize and their image tag will request the optimized image size for each um, placement of your image. So if we look at this, avoid the IMG URL, dictate a width or a height if it's a portrait type of photo, and it will automatically give us the width and height. No more having to calculate the height and width or messing around with too much CSS. Additionally, having the loading lazy option, um, either automatically inserted or added by uh, customized by yourself um, gives huge performance advantages as well as adding the crop or any other filters that you may use and especially with the widths attribute giving that source set it really allows you to fine-tune the resolution of the images that you want to display to your different users i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below thanks